According to the National Institute of Health, approximately 30% of the population struggles with sleep difficulties. Being sleep deprived is a miserable feeling, and it should be. Recent studies show being short on sleep interferes with communication between brain cells, or said more simply, your brain slows down. This makes it harder to think, learn, pay attention, remember, the list goes on. So you know you need a good night's sleep, and it would be great if you could just go one, two, three, sleep, and just like that, you're out cold. Some people seem to have that gift, but that isn't the case for most of us. So for today's video, I'll go over six important steps that can help you to fall asleep. All of them focus on setting the stage for sleep before you ever get into bed. For my first step, you need to earn your sleep. Most of us today live very sedentary lifestyles, typically involving a whole lot of sitting. Even just a few hundred years ago, most of us were farming. And you think that the pressure of a poor crop and not having enough food to eat would cause great issues with sleep, but it didn't. Today, we sleep worse than we ever have. So step one involves finding excuses to get moving during the course of the day so your body will feel more physically fatigued in the evening. Second, have a consistent time to go to bed and wake up daily. This is one of the few things that all sleep experts agree on. We're creatures of habit, so you want to be consistent here, weekends included. And for the shift workers of the world, I'm sure you're already aware that you're fighting your body's natural biorhythm, so just simply do your best to be consistent with sleep and wake times during whatever shift rotation you're following. And I highly encourage you to avoid napping unless you can restrict yourself to a 30 minute siesta in the early afternoon. For step three, I suggest setting aside 10 to 15 minutes to worry, but two hours before you go to bed. And instead of just worrying about things, I encourage you to write these worries down, examine them with your logical mind, and decide how you'll deal with these thoughts by asking better questions such as, do you have evidence or facts to show that the worries are mostly true or false? What's the chance the worry could happen? And what would be the plan to handle it if it were to happen? And for those of you who are more likely to get caught up in thinking about the to-dos of tomorrow, it's important to write these down as well. In fact, there's a recent study which shows it's taking five minutes to write down a to-do list for the following day to help people to fall asleep faster. For the fourth step, you need a wind down phase, and this should start one to two hours before bed. This can involve a number of different activities, such as taking a bath or shower, reading a book, doing a relaxation activity, you name it. If you choose to read and you're reading on a device, use the night shift mode on your phone, or at least turn down the brightness to help minimize the blue light. Primary goal here is to signal the reticular activating system in the brain, which acts as a dimmer switch between wake and sleep settings that it's time to start heading towards sleep. For step five, it's almost time to hop into bed, but before you do, you want to set the bedroom atmosphere for sleep. When doing this, three key steps come to mind. First, you want to keep it dark. Generally speaking, darker the better. Second, keep it cool. Within reason, of course, but somewhere in the 20 degrees Celsius, 68 degree Fahrenheit should do. Third, keep it quiet. Whatever noise there is, keep it consistent. So what do you mean by that? Is if silence is uncomfortable or your house is noisy, consider using a fan or white noise to help block out distracting background noise or random sounds. For my sixth and final step, prepare the mind for sleep. Chances are, one of the reasons you struggle to sleep is that you're likely associating bed with worry. So before you sleep, you need something interesting to think about if you don't fall asleep right away. Otherwise, what's likely to happen is you'll start to worry. So have something prepared to think about that's interesting. It could be what will happen next on whatever streaming series you're watching, your next vacation plan, and so on. But whatever you choose to think about needs to hold your interest and it can't be stressful. Also, don't put too much pressure on yourself to fall asleep. So this is only going to make it worse. Not to mention, there are four key stages to sleep. The first two steps typically don't get a lot of respect as there are lighter stages of sleep. Stages three and four are deeper levels of sleep. But stages one and two still count. So the goal is to relax as much as possible and associate rest and relaxation with being in bed. So I encourage you to try these steps to help prepare you for a better night's sleep. If you need help implementing these steps, please contact us at Sullivan Associates Clinical Psychology. If you enjoyed this video, like it, share it, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.